What have you done today to make you feel proud? things, I think they deserve another round of applause. <laughs> DJ, Ntelu Pata Pata again. Please stand up. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for responding to that call. Isn't that a wonderful song? Yes. It, I mean, okay, I think few of us were, were alive or we're still, I'm sure we're still toddlers at the time that they were singing Pata Patas and all of that. It's a lovely, lovely song. It is my special privilege to welcome you to today's function that marks the celebration of Women's Day which will be celebrated in South Africa tomorrow. When we as a team brainstormed on a speaker for today's event, so many names came to mind. Women who have carved a niche and made a significant impact in commerce and industry, in education, academia, and in politics. I asked myself an important question. What is the key message that I would like you to take back with you today? Personally, I feel strongly about the power of our minds that influence our reaction and response to the daily challenges that we, as women, face. Yvonne Chaka Chaka Miga captured this beautifully in her acceptance address here at the university earlier this year, when the university conferred an honorary degree in recognition of her contributions as a multi-talented lyricist and for her humanitarian work in Africa. It is now my pleasure to introduce our very own musical icon, philanthropist and humanitarian, Yvonne Chaka Chaka Miga. <laughs> This is my brand new CD, my 22nd album. I've just come back from Washington to release a single. Thank you very much for welcoming me to this beautiful place that I would like to call home. Thank you. And thanks to my mother, who was a domestic worker, who did not want me and my two elder sisters to be like her. I love her, I respect her the way I can never describe. Because with the little money that she had and the little education, she insisted that me and my two elder sisters get education. 
And you can imagine a household of four women, three girls and a mother without a father. My father died when I was 11 years old. I love my mother because she never said, Yvonne, hamba uyo panda. Rifilwe, hamba uyo panda. Skumbuzo, hamba uyo panda. She never did. She protected us. And today I look back and I say I'm a woman that I am because my mother was there and she never prostituted us. She gave us education, she gave us love, she protected us. And I can walk tall as a musician or whatever that I am and say I did it my way. I was never at anyone's mercy. So this is what I want to say to you ladies. Get where you want to be because you have to be there. Never sell yourself cheap. Never prostitute yourself. Never be at anyone's mercy. Look at yourself and say, I'm a woman, and I'm a good woman. And to females who are here in this hall today, who are in high positions, a question that I want to ask is, when you are in that position of authority, how many women do you take along with? Do we actually unleash other people's potential? Or you say, I'm in this high position and I want to be alone and pull others down. I think we have to learn to say, if I'm in the higher position, I want to take five other women with me. And that will make us better people because we've come a long way as women. What does statistics say about women in South Africa? In our country, women make up to 52.1% of adult population and 41.3% of, of the working class in South Africa. And they make up to 19.8% of all executive managers. That is a shame. 10.7% of all directors and 6.2% of executive officers and board chairs in the country. Census data shows that of all the 3,125 directorship positions held, only 221 are held by women. Has it changed? Has it changed? Do we have statisticians here? When I last checked three weeks ago, that's what it was saying. It hasn't changed. I think we need to congratulate this beautiful country of ours which is the very last country in Africa to get its freedom, and say in the last 50 years, the AU had been ruled by men, and now we have Nkosaza Nazuma, the most powerful woman in Africa. All she needs is our support. It's imperative for us as mothers to bring a, a girl child with us, empower them, I travel a lot in Africa, and a girl child is never taken to school. In other countries, boys are more appreciated than girls, which is sad. And remember, we live in this global village, not only in South Africa. So it's important that girls are empowered, girls are educated. As I said, I'm a mother of four boys, and I constantly ask my boys, Will you marry an illiterate woman? They say no. So it's important for us as mothers as well to empower our girls. And we as girls, we should not be depending on men. You know, I wake up in the morning and say to my husband, I want to go to New York tomorrow and tell him. And I book my ticket and I go. <laughs> I don't ask. I don't wait for him to approve it for as long as he knows where I'm gone. And that's how I've lived for 24 years with him. And I can tell you now, if he, if he wakes up tomorrow and he says to me, I'm tired of you, I'm going to say thank you. It's been good when we're together. And not cry. And go. Because it's all about me. It's my life. But we sit in these abusive marriages and say, what will people say? No! Life is too short. Move on! I will never encourage anybody to live or stay in an abusive marriage. No, you live once and you'll never live again. And I think it's imperative for women never to depend on men. But I respect my husband as the head of the house. We discuss things, you know, we, 
but I'm never going to be submissive to him. Never. Uh-uh. <laughs> you wake up in my household, you wake up in the morning, if he wakes up late, he makes the bed. <laughs> That's how it's done. You eat, you take your plate to the kitchen and wash it. Who must wash it? It's us parents who bring our boys to be superior than girls and constantly say, Hamba wena zotwa, go and wash the washing for your brother. Go and clean the house. Go and make your brother's bed. Hell no, that must change. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for having me and for allowing me to come here. Thank you to the department. I do not work for government, so I don't have to declare these. They are mine. Thank you. Now we get to the entertainment part of it, and um, we're going to be serving you with light refreshments. Enjoy the rest of the day. It's been an absolute pleasure hosting you. What have you done today to make you feel proud? <laughs>